All right, he is on again. But this time he's on the light rod. Pump, pump, pump. Oh, good job. Shoot. That's, a, that's, that's one hook, dude. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a got to hook, though. Dude, that's your 30 right there, dude. Yeah, that's my 30. Look at that. That's guaranteed 30 right there. That's a 30, dude. Look at this. And our little bomber, too. Yep. Vintage lures. Not vintage kidding. Lures. Not vintage, but on you the lip. Look how beat up that is. That's how you know a lure works. Mm -hmm. See, if you want to buy a lure from me, you got to buy the most beat up lure. That's the one that's guaranteed to work. But anyhow. Threw it upstream instead of going downstream. I think they moved upstream now. Yeah, that's why I'm going to the dam. Any <laughs> help? Any help? Any help? Any help? I'm a, I'm a her. I think it's a her. Throwback Thursday, Throwback baby. Throwback Thursday, baby. That's a big one. That's like at least. That's a, that's a solid 10 or 10 plus. Good fight. There it is. Woo! Knew it. It just disappears right there. It's probably just the whole pipe right here. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Connery from Out of Work Outdoors. Hope you guys are doing good. Today we're going to be covering stripers in june it is part of the fishing explained 2021 series where every month when i have time i do a video on a specific species how i would like to catch them and my favorite bait on how i want to i would like to catch them so today this video specifically is just f focused on stripers i also have a white bass version and i also have a large mouth bass version of, of this so if you're interested in multiple species go ahead and check those videos out as well but anyways uh stripers so when i'm thinking stripers in june i'm thinking hot weather i know it's already midway through june right now when this video comes out and i kind of wanted to wait a little bit because our june has been kind of weird it's not a normal june right until the last week to me june is already summer summer Post spawn is done, or maybe on a tailing end of post spawn, where they might be kind of still chasing a little bit of fry, you know, the little baits. But for the most part, we're back to we're back to normal fishing. We're not we're not throwing little baits anymore. Uh, we're throwing big baits. We're matching the bigger shad or the bigger. You know, some people have herring runs. So depending on what's in your area, you can now just match the you can say the primary forage versus the kind of a secondary or the hatchlings of the forge okay so this is where we're just we're starting to we're starting to really catch them um for some people some people are starting to lose them so this time of year for me if you're talking stripers a couple of things comes to mind we're gonna kind of really simplify everything for everybody and we're gonna start with the baits because that's why everybody's here everybody wants to know about the baits so for me, in terms of, if you guys paid attention to last month, right? Last month, we just barely introduced the idea or the concept of fishing at night. Um, a lot of people do not fish at night. So for the guys that enjoy fishing at night, they're probably going to hate me for saying this, but the biggest stripers are always caught at night. If you look at all the records that are out there, or the suggest you even say the top ten percent of all the stripers, the heaviest stripers that are caught, they're usually caught at night. Okay, so if you're looking for a true trophy of of that magnitude, you kind of want to go at night. Okay, so for me, if I'm talking striper fishing in June, July, August, summer months, the sun is so hot anyways. You want to target the night time. So for me, at night. This is what we're throwing. These styles, these styles of lures. Either you have a, this is a Magnum Crystal Minnow, okay? There's also the Yozuris that are really, really good. 
hydro minnows that are real good. But this is old standby. You know, if you had to just tell me, uh, what are you going to do? Let's see, striper fishing. Throw in this guy. This is a long A Magnum. Jointed. The jointed because a jointed, uh, during the night hours, you know, you're not really aiming to cast 100 yards out. You're really throwing maybe 20. Most of your bites are going to be, you say you cast 20, 30 yards out, and you reel it into about 20 yards off the bank. This is bank fishing, too. You can do it in a boat, but for the most part, most of the guys will be on the bank. And they'll smoke it about 20 yards off the bank. They'll be right there in that 5 to 10 foot of water. So these are my go-tos for the summertime. If you're talking about night fishing. Now, that's assuming your, your forage is pretty good size, right? So if you're talking about herring, that's like a perfect size for herring. Uh, perfect size for herring. Uh, blueback, skipjacks, uh, even, um, uh, what else do we have? Gizzard chad. That's actually the same size as a gizzard chad. But, but... If all you got is thread fins, thread fins are it's a small bait fish. The the biggest thread fin I've ever seen is maybe five inches. You still got these guys, so don't don't worry about it. You know they will bite this too. These are just traditional bass lures. It's a Dual Rias 120. Uh, this is a actual Mega Bass. Uh, you know, at night it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, solid colors. This one's kind of a unique color. But I just have it here just to show you guys. But All right, guys, uh, this colors don't really matter too much at night. Today. As long as it's white, uh, so like black, Thursday, or some kind of natural color. Strappers. This is uh, probably, okay. I would say so that's the night page. bite. You know, those, those, those are the lures for the night. Now, if you're not a night guy, you're just like, you know, I don't have a flashlight. I hate the fact that I can't see anything. I might step on a snake. I can't see where I'm going. No problems, you know, no problems. Because we also, second on the list, we like throwing top waters. Top waters. Once again, top water. This is what we're throwing. If you're if you're targeting a striped bass that's over 20 inches, and they're chasing gizzard shads, macro, you know those those 12 inch or longer baits. It is really hard to beat a Gibbs, Gibbs pencil popper. Uh, just get in the color that your uh, natural forge looks like. So this is a macro color. Yeah, the, the, these are still our um, words that we bought for uh, Cape Cod. Still saving them up. We're gonna go back. They're killing it this year. It's crazy. That, for for the most part, for me, I need to go to the lake that has gizzard chat. That's exactly what this guy is. A big gliding, like gliding. Well, what am I doing? Gliding, you know, gliding bait, gliding bait. Um, uh, strippers love them, they love them, but hey, you know what? Not every single lake has big forage. Most of our lakes will have threadfin shad. Threadfin shad, gotta step it down to the these are the five and a half inch Imus. Once again, these have been weighted to cast decently far. This is not over two and a half ounces. We've weighted these to two, almost three ounces, and they can cast 150 yards. But I still wanted the uh, these to float a little bit. So these are just nicely weighted. They're not extremely weighted. But these are the I'm a little sticks. These are probably one of the best uh, casting mid-size yeah, top water boards. Well, they're not. They're not top order really now anymore, but I still put them in that category. And of course, you know, if you're chasing stripers, be sure to upgrade all these hooks. Be sure to upgrade all the hooks. These are rocking the Gamagatsu uh, EWG size fours. Because if you don't, they're going to bend out. That's why. So... I like I said, I'm keeping it simple. You can also throw the traditional hidden spooks, changes the you know the lures out, I uh, mean the hooks out. But we like those because they splash more and uh, they cast a little bit better. Okay, so pretty much you can almost end it on that. I think most people, most of the guys, let me know if this is one of you guys, 
most of you guys are probably going to end it right here. You guys are probably not going to go to these two. But if you ever have a chance to do this, this is a totally different experience. The umbrella rig and the clear A rig. For the guys that don't know, let me show you quickly. This is more of a boat affair where you have to be on a cliff or something like that in order to cast into deep water. Okay, so this is the umbrella rig. This is something that the stripers cannot stand. This is the Captain Max, and I also have a, another guy. Uh, he's got the thing called Atlas Rig. I really like his design also. I don't have any, I don't have one in front of me right now. I have two of those rigs too. Uh, his rigs are pretty unique. They're fairly unique. You, you, could, you could take them down and uh, you know put them in a little uh, container versus this one. You kind of have a you gotta somehow fit this somewhere. But you guys have seen it on the channel before. This this is also the time of year where they're real hungry. They're all on humps, things like that. And you can troll this right by them, and they they just can't. They just they just go crazy. So that's that's a trolling. That's a trolling rig, so you need a, a boat, a kayak, something like that. But don't forget about the castable rigs, okay? So for the castable rigs, this is a traditional uh, castable Alabama rig. Uh, metal arms, and I've rigged five swim baits on it. All of them are rigged weedless, okay? This is when you're wanting to bounce the bottom. There's a lot of, say, say they're around trees, uh, they're in real shallow water with a lot of big rocks, things like that. Say you're cast into riprap. That's the one you want. But, if you're in heavy pressured areas, okay, this is where this one comes in. This is one of our rigs. It's kind of been used and abused already. It's kind of just dangling there now, but uh, this is one of our rigs, and we call it the clear rig simply just a clear rig and what it is is it's it's it follows the idea of a umbrella rig but the arms are just made with fluorocarbon and the reason for it is it's so it'll stay invisible underwater on top of that this rig's got a lot more action let me show you again so if you look at this the arms are pretty stiff they're pretty stiff once you spread them open like that they pretty much stay very spread open this one is very it's just very loose, as you can see. It's very loose. If you pay attention to the arms. Okay? Which makes the bait ball very lively when you're reeling it and you're twitching it. It's really, really good. Good for that. Okay? So that's, that's that. That's boats. Find them. Using electronics. You don't need very expensive electronics to do this. You can use a $200 uh, just 2D sonar only. The key thing is you just need to know where all the uh, the humps are at, or at least your phone. Your phone could do this. Download the Navionics app, and you can track where you're at. So you can you can look at areas of interest and go go observe. And if you find the schools, you can troll through the schools. That's the name of the game for the umbrella rig or the clear rig or the A rig. Uh, once you find them, cast them. If you want to cast, you got to do it with a clear rig. A rig. The umbrella rig is not really castable. You basically you gotta drop it, troll. But for the most part, this is the month where I really, really like the flutter spoon bite. A lot of people never get to experience this. Let me show you the spoons I'm throwing. These are my two favorite spoons. Once again, I think I mentioned these last month. But this is the six cents spoon. It's been used a couple times. As you can see, it's kind of rusty right now. Probably gonna go polish that off. Upgraded hooks with a swivel on the end. And this is the Ben Parker. Uh, I think this is the, uh, they call it the mini, I think. But this one, this one catches, this one catches a lot of fish. But I usually throw these two, most of the times. I usually have this one tied on. And then if this doesn't work, then I'll try this on. And if I run into a big school of fish, if I run into a real big school of fish where there's big returns, we throw this guy. This is the Ben Parker 8-inch spoon. And it's huge. It's 8 inches. But if you really look at it, it's not that big. You know, look at it. It's not that big. It's not that big. You know. 
Look at that. See? It is not that big. It is right there. Stripers will eat this. So basically what I do with these guys is I find the school. I stay maybe 20 feet away from them. I cast this thing out and I just rip it up and down. Let it bounce up and down on the ground. Uh, basically through the school. And this is what I like to do when I say I want to hit them on the head. So basically when you rip the spoon, the spoon goes flying. And then give it some slack. It actually slides backwards. Slides backwards and I, I try to hit them in the head. And once I hit a couple of them in the head, uh, one of them has got to bite it. So when one bites it, one might grab it down here. Especially if it's on this big spoon. You still got two extra hooks up here too. So you could actually hook up with two, three fish possibly. So that's a really crazy bite. And it's a really aggressive bite too when you do get it. So crazy stuff. Make sure you have the proper rod reel set for all that stuff too. Because it kind of varies quite a bit. Uh, for the little, little baits, probably seven and a half foot rod, medium heavy spinner rod, 20 pound braid. You're going to be all right. For the... The big top waters, you're throwing that on a surf rod or a big bait caster. 7, 6, 30 pound test, 65 pound test. Oh, it's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. The spoons, I like the fluorocarbon, 7 foot 6 flip stick. Uh, fast gear ratio, 8 to 1 gear ratio. I throw it on a bait caster. Uh, 20 pound, 25 pound line. That's what I want. That's what you should have. Okay, put it that way. All right, when and where? This is the magic stuff I'm about to tell you guys, right? When and where. Okay, stripers, we've fished them enough. Uh, you can say I have like 10 years of experience. If you add me, my group of people together. All right, we got another fish on, guys. We're over 100 hours uh, 100 years of experience. Kind of doing things if you add all the uh, years together, together right? Like, so for me, if you're going to fish at night, GT. you don't have to go out there six or seven. There is, there might be like a, a afternoon bite, which is pretty good. You can still catch up on top waters like that. But you, typically, those are the schooling fish, like the schoolers. You know, people call them schoolies. They're not that big. It's usually when that school calms down and they start running for their lives. That's when the big boys come in. So the big, big stripers, they roll in an hour. They roll in an hour after dark. So the schoolies are going around. You know, six, seven, and they shut off at eight and eight thirty sunsets. Nine thirty is when you should start thinking about okay, probably gonna get a big bite. So from about nine thirty, ten, ten fifteen, kind of that, kind of that forty five minute window. It's a good bite. It's always a good bite, especially if it's been hot all day and now it's just gonna start. Stars are out. It's always a good bite. And then for some reason, there's another bite at about 11, 11, 30, 12 kind of deal. And it dies down again. And there's always like an hour and a half or a two hour period of no activity. And then it picks up again at two in the morning. And then pretty much you're done. You're done for the night. Okay. At that point, you're probably worn out too. You want to go home. So that's the night bite for the jerk baits. Okay. Keep that in mind. Top water really only happens during prime time. You know, early morning, right before dark. Umbrella rig, during the day. During the day. Trolling during the day. Any time of the day, umbrella rigs are good. It doesn't matter. Flutter spoon. The flutter spoon is best between 11 and 2 during the day. When the fish are lazy, they're not roaming a lot no more. Because all the other all the, all the hours, all the other hours of the day, they might be roaming around, right? When you're throwing the flutter spoon, you want them to kind of be chilling in one spot so you can hit them and they'll cause them to react, okay? So a flutter spoon is a totally different approach. You have to find them first and then you cast them. But when you get that system rolling, it is awesome. So where do you fish these, right? Night, the night hours, focus on the flats, the flatter points with, you know, rocks and stuff like that. Flatter points. The jerk baits, flatter points. If you're throwing uh, top water, once again, flatter points, same areas. And then if you're throwing a rig, or if you're trolling, then you're targeting humps, offshore humps, or points, elongated points. Uh, the fish will be out there in the deeper area. So start at the point, start shallow with your boat, and just simply just go straight out from the point until you find them. 
Uh, it's a really simple tip. Try it. Let me know if it works for you. It's worked for me many times. And you have to use your electronics. Like I said, you can have the fancy electronics. You catch them easy. Or you can have basic electronics. Catch them almost as good. Okay. And like I said, with the spoon, the spoon bite is you have to find the fish. So once again, your electronics, uh, you find the fish. You can rip it or you can just slow reel. I've caught them slow reeling it too. So that is stripers for June. Okay. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want to add something to it. Because I know we are uh, we want to start a discussion. We got stripers on the east coast, the west coast, and the mid coast. That's right. We're calling ourselves the mid coast. We're from Oklahoma, mid coast. Okay. So once again, Connery from out of work. Let me know if I missed something. Share this video with your friends, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys. Clocking out.